Well, good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well, and if you've had a good week, and uh, always I pray that you'll have a great week coming up. And uh, I really want to give you greetings again here at Equippers Church and welcome you to our online service. And I really hope you've been enjoying the series that we've been doing these last number of weeks that we're calling Stepping Into the Flow. And I really love that picture of, uh, that we see in Ezekiel 47, where we see the, the river of God flowing out of the temple of God and flowing towards us, of course, and bringing healing to us, but then through us bringing healing to the world around about us. And I really love that picture. I love how the river of God brings, uh, brings life and brings healing and brings restoration to, to dead places. And I don't know about you, but I really want to get caught up in that kind of vision and experience not only for myself the healing power of God, uh, but also for the healing power of God to flow through me to, to the world uh, around me. And so, yeah, I really pray that you've been catching this amazing picture that we've been trying to paint these last couple of weeks. And what I want to do uh, in my message this morning is I want to focus on one of our axioms that we have here at Equippers Church. Now, an axiom basically is like a statement or a phrase that, um, that communicates like a statement of fact or a reality or, or a value that somebody might believe in or a group of people might believe in. And here at Equippers, we've got a, a list of axioms, uh, like values that we kind of live out of. And, and I want to talk about one of those this morning. And the axiom I want to focus on today is, uh, is this. It's more about flow than fit. Let me say that again so uh, you, you catch that. It's more about flow than fit. And I'm going to unpack that idea uh, as I go through this message this morning. But just to say at, at, this, at the start that when I say it's more about flow than fit, we don't mean here at Equippers that people are not defined like their own personal expression or their God-given gifting or their God-given calling or their God-given talent. In fact, I would say that it's actually super important that every single one of us discover what God has called us to do. And, and I, don't, I think it's one of the most fulfilling things that we could ever discover when we f really find out like, what has God put on my life? Where do, I, where do I find my expression? So we're not saying that people don't find a fit, but what we're saying is, is that it's more about flow than fit. And, and really what we're saying is that you will find your fit and find your expression when you find a flow. And that's the, that's the important part. Now let me unpack that just a little bit more so you understand what I mean. When I say it's more about flow than fit, really what I'm saying is that um, it's not about God fitting into our agenda, but it's about us fitting into God's agenda. And do you see the difference between the two there? So it's not like God is revolving around my agenda and uh, my plans and purposes, but I'm revolving around God's plans and purposes and His agenda. And I think when we do that, we actually really start to find something of a flow. Now, going back to this, this chapter in Ezekiel 47, I actually think that we, we kind of see this with the banks of the river. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit as well this morning, is, is not just the river itself, but actually the banks of the river. And so let me just take you to two verses in that chapter. And, uh, and we kind of see what, what, what it says here. In Ezekiel 47, verse 6, after this angelic being has taken Ezekiel on this journey of like, he's taken him into the river, and uh, if you remember when Ezekiel first, first gets into the river, it's kind of ankle deep, then it's knee deep, and he's finding himself getting deeper and deeper into this river, then it's waist deep, and then he's like, he's swimming in the thing because it's obviously too, too deep for, for him to, you know, put his feet on the floor. And, and then you find in verse 6, the, this angelic being says to Ezekiel, he said, he asked me, son of man, do you see this? Meaning this, this flow of a river. Then he led me back to the bank of the river. And I just want you to catch that for a moment because I love that idea that the, the, the angel took Ezekiel back to the banks of the river 
And I think like what Ezekiel is experiencing, he's, he's once again feeling his foot in, he's on, like, he's, he knows he's on stable ground, and, and he's got a really good view actually from that place, from the, from the banks of the river, he's got a really good view of what actually is going on in the river. So there's a focus there in that verse on the banks of the river, and then if you drop down in the same chapter in verse 12, Ezekiel 47 verse 12, it says this, the fruit trees of all kinds will grow, and catch this guys, on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. So I really want you to catch those kind of like those two verses there that there's a real focus on the banks, not just the river, but also the banks. And I think that banks are really important, right, for a river. Because if you don't have banks, you pretty much end up with a bit of a swamp. Uh, you know, it's like the, the, the water is starting to go in all different directions kind of randomly, and there's no real direction to the river. But the banks actually bring some direction, they bring purpose, they bring destiny, they bring meaning uh, to actually the flow of the river. And I really feel like, uh, you know, that these banks that we're looking at here in Ezekiel 47, what they talk to us about in a church context would be things like our heart values, our culture, um, our vision, our mission, and, and, you know, we talk a lot about stuff like that here at Equippers because we believe that they are the banks to our river. Now, we're, we're kind of in a flow. We've got a vision from God. We're going in a particular direction. But things like culture uh, or our heart values actually keep us together and unify us, and we all start flowing in the same direction together. So that in a corporate sense, really, that it's, it, uh, they are things like that. Vision, heart values, de um, uh, culture, those kind of things will keep us together. But I don't think it's just a corporate thing that's going on here. It's also personal. And because I believe that God calls us personally actually into the flow of the river. And, and what I want to do, uh, just for a moment, I want to share with you a testimony of how me and Karen ended, uh, ended up coming up from Wales uh, to move to Surrey and to be part of, of the Equippers Church. We already had some relationships with some of the leaders up here, and we knew some of the people. Uh, we were leading a church back in Wales, and, uh, and we used to, used to come back and forth up to Surrey and up to London to come to some of the, uh, uh, some of the conferences that used to go on. And, uh, you know, we had regular contact with, with, with Pastor Peter and Pastor Mark and some of the other guys. We had a good friendship but we were down there and they were up here. And then for over a, like a period of time, me and Karen really started to feel like the nudging of the Holy Spirit uh, to move from Wales to come up to Surrey. Now, I guess like we're all aware of the fact that when God nudges you to do something like that, you want to make sure that it's the right thing, right? I mean, we were quite busy in Wales. We had a lot of responsibility. Uh, we were overseeing uh, like a couple of churches. We were obviously ministering to a whole bunch of people. I was going into schools and doing some ministry there. Man, we were, we were like, we were quite busy. So, you know, when you move, you want to make sure that it's, it's the right decision, right? So me and Karen were praying about it and wondering, God, is this right? Is this right to do? And then all of a sudden, something really interesting, guys, that God started to speak to me through the number 23, and uh, like a God never had really spoken to me like through a number before like that. But all of a sudden, I was starting to see like the number 23 just pop up everywhere. Like if I looked at my phone, it was, you know, the time was something 23. Then I'd look at something else and it was like the number 23 was becoming very, very obvious. So much so that I remember saying to Karen one day, I said, Karen, I don't know what it is, but I'm telling you now before like God shows me what it's about, but God is really speaking to me through the number 23. And that kept on going actually for like for a couple of months. Uh, and then one day I woke up in the morning and why I didn't think about this before, I don't know, but I woke up one morning and I thought, Neil, why don't you just Google, 
you know, our good friend Google, right? I, I, why don't you just Google and, and select find out if the number 23 means anything in the Bible? So I Googled that and then bang, all of a sudden, the whole thing just like opened up, right? And so I discovered that the number 23 in the Bible is all to do with God being with you. Now, just think now, we're thinking about, shall we move? Are we supposed to go up to Surrey? And then I get this like, you know, this message from God, like, I'm, I'm with you. And it was like real kind of like signposts, you know, it's like glaring at me, you know, I'm with you on this. And I started to realize like certain verses in the Bible that have the number 23 in it and all to do with God being with people. So Exodus 23, 23, God says, I will send my angel before you. And then Jeremiah 20, 20, uh, 23, 23, uh, is where God says, am I not the God who is near? I'm not far away. Psalm 23, which of course many of us know that psalm well, where David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. Here's another one, guys, you know, one that we often quote at Christmas time. Matthew 1 verse 23, you shall call his name Emmanuel, for God is with us. And then I was amazed to discover like that the 23,000 verse in the Bible, which happens to be Zechariah chapter 8, verse 23, is all to do with, the, with people coming to the people of God because they've heard that God is with them. Now, man, I tell you, like, can you imagine all this just opened up for me, right? It was just incredible. But once again, me and Karen just still wanted a little bit more like confirmation, God, is this right? And, and guys, I tell you, what happened after that was just incredible. So the next day, that God showed me all this stuff. A friend of mine actually took me out for a meal, took me to a restaurant. Guess what table number we were sitting on? Table number 23. Then I was flying to Denmark uh, to, go, to go and study in a college over there for a week. I was traveling by myself, so I just did like a random, uh, a random seating thing. And guess what seat number I was sitting in? Number 23. <laughs> it was absolutely unbelievable. And then I came back from Denmark, and me and Karen went out for breakfast one morning and I was standing by the counter and you know like when they give you like a bucket with a spoon in it to, you know, to show you your table number uh, and it's, you know, like it's got, the spoon has got a number on it. I remember standing by the counter and thinking, man, if this woman gives me like a spoon with a number 23 in it, I'm going to fall over. But you know, the funny thing was, was that I actually knew she was going to do that. I don't know why, but I just, I just knew that was going to happen. And guess what number she gave me? Number 23. I walked outside, I threw the spoon on the table, and I said to Karen, Karen, check that out. And, and then, I, like, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I was starting to realize, like, that God really is in the business of connecting us with a group of people. And that's really important. In fact, not long after, when we had another moment, me and Karen, because we still wanted to be sure, right, you know? And when, once, we got it con once we were convinced, like, we, we came, you know, but we still wanted to get it sure uh, and be sure about it. So, you know, me and Karen were talking about it again one day. And then when I walked out of the house, I was going somewhere, and then Karen was on her own. She grabbed hold of a devotional book, and, uh, and she said, God, I know you're not supposed to do this, but I'm going to just like open this book and I'm just asking, would you speak to us and make it really clear, right? And she grabbed this devotional book and she opened it. And guys, I'm not kidding, right? It's like she started reading in this devotional book and it started off going like this. Are you thinking about moving? That was the question. Are you thinking about moving? And then it went on to say this. If you stay here when God is calling you there, you will miss out on the blessing because it's all about people and places. Man, and I tell you, when I got back to the house and Karen told me about that, for me, that was like, Karen, we, we got to go. Like, we got to go. We, it, we don't know what it looks like, but we, but we got to go. And I started to realize how God connects us with a group of people and when we catch that vision and we actually give ourselves to that group of people and we give ourselves to the vision that God has given our people and we start to flow, something happens in our life. 
uh, we, we actually end up getting blessed. Our lives go to a whole new level. Um, and, and it's like it's really important for us to actually feel planted and into the right soil and to get connected with the right people. In fact, that devotional book in the same page went on to say this, which is incredible. It almost like kind of changed, changed subject, really, within the same, within the same page, which, which is kind of interesting. The question the guy went on to, the, the, the thing that went, the guy went on to say was this, that, um, you know, any of us can count how many seeds there are in an apple, but only God knows how many apples there are in a seed. And that's so true, isn't it? I mean, you could cut an apple in half and you, you can kind of count the seeds inside it. But none of us really know how many apples there will come from one seed. Only God knows that part, right? But there is one thing that we do know, I guess, and that is this. If you plant that seed in good soil, if you plant that seed in the right place, you're going to get like a good crop. And, and it, like the whole idea was, was about being planted in the right place with the right people. And, and if, what was amazing about this as well was that a few days later, me and Karen came up to Surrey and we attended one of the churches here and Pastor Peter Prothero was pre preaching that, small, that morning and he used the exact same analogy that I had already read in that book. And, and Peter basically like said this, hey, hey, listen guys, any of us can count how many seeds there are in an apple but only God knows how many apples there are in a seed. And then he looked right at me, right? And he just said this, it's just that some people need to get planted in the right place. And I, I'm telling you, I didn't, I, it, for me, that wasn't just Peter speaking. That was like the Holy Spirit spoke right into my heart. And I remember kind of like nudging Karen and saying, Karen, we're going to Surrey. We, we got to get up there. And, and you know, it's like what's happened in our lives since we've moved up? has been incredible. Now, quick recap. Just catch what I'm trying to say to us, to us guys this morning, right? It's about getting connected with the right people and finding the right place, giving yourself to, the, to that people, giving yourself to the vision of that people, and finding a flow. So, like, remember now, it's not about God's agenda revolving around, you know, it's not us kind of like, um, being the, the center of everything and God has to fit in with our agenda, but we revolve around God's agenda. When we do that, everything starts to become bigger than us. If we're only relying on, on our little agenda, our lives, I think, are going to be very, very small and very limited. But if we find our flow with God's big picture and God's big agenda, all of a sudden we find ourselves flowing in that river and wow, we then do find our fit. Man, I, since I've moved up here in Surrey, I feel like I have found something that God had put within me. It had always been there. But when I first gave myself over to God's agenda, it kind of opened something up in terms of what God had put in me. And I, I hope you catch that this morning because it's like this is super important. Really, really important. And I learned this valuable lesson when we first moved up. So it's about flowing first with a bigger picture, then finding your fit after that and finding your expression in a bigger picture. And journeying with the people and flowing in the river and the vision that God has given that people. In many ways, it's like you, you start off actually like being, like being a bit of a servant, you know? When we first moved up here from, from Wales, first thing that I did was just, I got stuck in, just started to serve whatever needed to be done, man, I was there. I just wanted to give myself to the people. I wanted to give myself to the bigger vision. And then what happened is that I went through, a, I went through stages of like, next step, then, then, then next step, then next step. And now I have found my fit like, like never before because I've, I'm part of a bigger, a bigger flow. And I found that I've gotten planted in good soil. I've, I've planted myself, both me and Karen, we find ourselves being planted in good, healthy soil, and it's made us flourish. And I just want to finish off on three quick thoughts 
on what stepping into the flow will do for you and me when we do it. Here's the first thing that I want to say. Stepping into the flow expands your life. You know, we've kind of already touched on this a little bit, right? But, you know, the idea of us stepping into something bigger. But I can tell you guys, since me and Karen have moved into this big, bigger picture up here and just given ourselves to it, our lives have, have grown to a whole new level. I don't think we would have grown to this extent in our personal lives if we had stayed in Wales. You know, we've grown in authority. We've grown in wisdom. We've grown in experience. Uh, and we've just grown. I mean, there are so many parts of our lives that have grown and we're experiencing the blessing and the benefit of, of being part of a bigger picture and going with the flow and giving ourselves to it. So that's the first thing that I think will happen to, our, to us when we step into the flow, is that our life will expand. Stepping into the flow expands your life. The next thing that I want to say just really quickly is that, is that stepping into the flow is actually really exciting. Stepping into the flow is really exciting. I believe that we're all looking for a bit of an adventure, right? Every single one of us, we're all looking for something bigger. We all want to find some sort of definition and meaning to our lives in something bigger. Man, what, what greater thing is there than to go on an adventure with God? Man, I tell you, I still remember the day when we, we just sold up in, in, in Wales. We sold our house and I kind of like, you know, moved, started to move up here. Didn't really know how it was all going to pan out and what the outcome was going to be. But we just knew because of the number 23 and the way God spoke to us through the devotional book. Man, we just knew, God, you're in this. We're going. We're going. Man, and I tell you, not only has our lives expanded, but it's been like super, super exciting journey. Man, what an adventure it has been. The way that God has led us and the, the joy that's come into our lives by experiencing God's presence in all this has, has been absolutely incredible. You know, I was thinking about this when I was reading through Ezekiel 47. There's actually a really cool thought, I think, in verse 5. And, and it kind of shows a little bit of Ezekiel's attitude. Because if you read through the, through the chapter there, once again, you know, he's, he's gone into the river ankle deep then he's knee deep, then he's waist deep. And then in verse 5 there, it says, um, you know, obviously now he was too deep for, for, like for him to just to paddle around in the thing. Uh, you know, he was like over his head. And, and I love what it, what like what it says. It, uh, it says that, you know, Ezekiel talked about how, you know, he, he, he was over his head because now, it was, it was the river was, too, was, was big enough to swim in. The river was big enough to swim in. And what I want you to notice is the positive aspect, like the positive view that he has of that river. It's like he's not, he's not saying, oh, the river was too deep for me, you know, so I had to swim through it. He's actually saying, you know, I, I was kind of like in over my head because the river was big enough to swim in. I don't know if you can catch what I'm saying there, but it was almost like he was actually really excited about this. He wasn't saying, oh, the river is too deep for me. I was in over my head, he's saying, because the river was, was deep enough to swim in. Almost like he's saying, I've been looking forward to this. I've been going through this river ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep, but I'm experiencing like, you know, what this river has to offer and I can't wait to get in over my head. <laughs> I think like that's, it's like that perspective. And, and I would say that since me and Karen moved up here from, from Wales, man, it has been super, super exciting. Super exciting. So I want to encourage you guys this morning, you know, when you step out into the flow, right? When you step out into what God is calling you into, you know, you get connected with the right people, you know, here you are, guys, this morning online and, you know, being connected with Equipus Church. I want to encourage you, like, do all you can to get fully connected. Do all you can to get fully in 
with a vision and with a flow because it's going to so bless your life and it's going to open up your life, it's going to expand your life and, and it's a super, super exciting journey when you start going on an adventure with God. And then lastly, I just, I just want to say this, that stepping into the flow helps you to know God and His blessings more. You know, I knew God pretty well back in Wales. Of course I did. You know, I had a relationship with Jesus there. But there are many, many different aspects to God, right? You're probably aware of that. That's why there's so many names in the Bible about God, because there's so many different aspects about who He is. And I think that we've discovered God in certain ways since we've moved up here that we probably wouldn't have got to know Him back in Wales. Like the bigness of God. Man, I tell you what, you know, moving up to Surrey from Wales financially is a different world altogether. You know, it's, like a, it's, it's just so expensive up here compared to what it's like in Wales. And I remember when we first came up, actually, and we were kind of driving around and looking for, for, for somewhere to rent. And, uh, and Karen, actually, in, in her prayer time one day, said, uh, said to God, God, we can't afford this. And as soon as she said that, the Holy Spirit responded to her and said, but I can. I can. And I tell you what, guys, we have experienced the provision of God and the miraculous provision and blessing of God since we moved up here like, we've, like never before. And, and so what, what that's done, of course, is that not only have we been blessed by God, but it's helped us to understand more of who God is. God is a God of grace. You know, God is a God of goodness. He's a good God. You know, one of the things that we've discovered since we've moved up is how faithful God is. Like, I knew something of that back in Wales. I knew God was faithful, but not like this. I mean, I've realized, like it says in the Psalms, that, you know, when the psalmist says, your faithfulness is higher than the skies. I mean, I've discovered God's faithfulness at a whole new level. So I really want to encourage you guys. I really like, I really want you to catch this idea that what I'm trying to share with you this morning. That when you step into the flow, you step into the flow, and you get yourself connected with, with, with the people. You know, for us here at Equippers Church, and you know, we want you to get connected more and more with us here at Equippers Church. When you give yourself to a vision that's bigger than you, that's bigger than me, you know, it's not about us, it, you know, ultimately, it's about Jesus, right? It's about Jesus' vision. When you give yourself over to that, you know, in a kind of like a service capacity, you say, God, I'm in this. I'm giving myself to this vision. I'm giving myself to this people. I'm going, I'm going in this flow. I'm going with this flow and in this river. Um, when you do that, I really, I really want to encourage you guys that when you do that, your life is going to be so touched by God. You know, it's so true to say that blessing is on the other side of obedience. And when you give yourself over to this kind of stuff, your life, my life, our lives will expand. When you step into the flow, your life will expand. You will grow. You will grow in authority, in wisdom, in your knowledge. Man, your life will grow. And I'm sure you're, if you're like me, and I'm sure you are, we want our lives to mean something, right? We want our lives to have impact and to grow. Your life will become you know, super exciting on a whole new level when you start to go on an adventure with Jesus like that. And then thirdly, you will come to know God and His blessing like never, ever before. And so I really pray that, that you will really catch that this morning and you will realize through this message, if you haven't learned it before, maybe this is a reminder to you or maybe you've never learned this before, I want to tell you guys, it's more about flow than fit. It's more about flow than fit. First of all, we give ourselves over to God's agenda, to God's mission, and get ourselves connected with a group of people. And then from that point, boom, the river opens up from there. And then you will find your fit and your personal expression in something much, much bigger than you and me. And that's a very, very exciting place to be. 
So I really pray God's blessing on you today. And uh, yeah, I just pray that you've had a great time with us this morning. And God has been speaking to you. And we will see you soon, guys. And we wish you all the best and take care.